The Flyers were in second place in the Metro. They were playing some of the best hockey in the entire NHL. And then we hit the pause button. Currently, the Flyers are second in the Metropolitan Division. They currently sit uh, one point behind the Washington Capitals. And they are currently three points ahead of the Pittsburgh Penguins and their general manager who helped put this team together and lead it, hiring the coach, is Chuck Fletcher. And he joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And uh, we're going to check in with him and the team right now. Uh, Chuck, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Uh, doing okay. Hopefully you're staying safe and uh, during these very odd times uh, in sports. What's it like to be the general manager of a team and have all this free time on your hands right now and basically a helpless feeling of, of continuing this season? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely different times, as you said. And, uh, you know, it's been a little bit frustrating to, to have the season pause when it did. But when you look at things and the entirety of what's going on right now, it's uh, it's crazy. The number of people that are being affected and whether they're losing their jobs or getting sick and a lot of people are dying, it's it's it's. I guess our problems are few and far between, but it, it it's it's different um, for everybody. I, I'm assuming everybody in their walk of life. It's incredibly different right now, and uh, working from home and and trying to stay in touch with with scouts and and our coaches and our front office staff, and and obviously not knowing when will when will restart and what the rules will be, and and uh, whether we'll have a regular season or playoffs or whether we won't, and. And so there's only so much you can uh, can control, but we're uh, we're trying to do some of the work that we can right now, and and just stay out of the way and stay safe. And how difficult is that? As your team was playing so well, you know they won nine out of ten, playing probably some of the best hockey in the entire league. They made a push from where there was a discussion of, hey, are they going to be a wild card team to now firmly uh, in one of those top three spots? In fact, in the second spot of the Metro. So. Just the way that you guys were playing, you know, and trying to picture, are we going to be able to get back to that level of where we were if we even restart this league? That has to be a very frustrating thought as well. Yeah, you, the, the fortunate thing, I guess, for, you know, with, with sports, when it does get going again, everybody will be in the same the same boat. Everybody is off and everybody had their momentum stalled, whether it was positive or negative mo- momentum. And, and we're all going to have to start over whenever that may be. But, uh, you know, what I like about our group, and I give a lot of credit to, to Ron Hextall, who uh, did a great job of drafting and, and uh, you know, stocking the cupboards full of players. I mean, when you, whether you look at the number of young players that we have or, or, or our quality veteran players, um, you know, we have, we have depth in goal, we have depth in defense, we have depth up front. So I, I think we're a team that certainly is competitive right now and was competitive at the pause. But, you know, when we do get going again, we're a team that should be a pretty good team for a few years here. And, um, you know, we're, we're set up well for, for both, you know, short and long-term success. So, you know, who knows coming out of this if we if we start at the end of the summer and, and try to finish this year, it certainly would be different. Um, again, everybody's starting over. Uh, who knows how, you know, how things will, will play out and certain players will probably handle it better than others, certain teams better than others. others. So there'll be some randomness to it, but that'd be a nice problem to have. It'd be a lot of fun. And, and uh, we'd love to get to that point because that means that we're in a, in a place where, where we can where we can play these games, and that would be good for everybody. Sure would. Chuck Fletcher's with us, the GM of the Flyers. What area has exceeded your expectations this year? You, you talked about the depth you have, goal, defense. You know, a, a lot of those young defenders that were drafted and we kept hearing about for years. Uh, you have more veterans, uh, a nice mix of veterans and some younger players forwards-wise. But where was the spot that maybe you were wondering about that maybe exceeded what you thought they might do? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I think the, you know, the biggest area that I saw for where we improved a lot was just with our with our defense core, and uh, you know, Ivan Provorov really bounced back and and uh, uh, you know not only played as well as he did two years ago, but exceeded it. And looks like he's emerging as a as a top flight defenseman in the National Hockey League. Travis Sandheim really. Uh, uh, really improved as the year went on. Phil Myers took another big step. Robert Hag had a tremendous season, and and uh, you know I, I just think that our young defensemen in particular really took a step, and we're one of the I think we're in the bottom three teams in the league in terms of 
age uh, in terms of being one of the youngest defense corps in the league yet uh, you know, we, we really far exceeded that in terms of how we played. And a lot of credit obviously goes to our coaching staff and I think as well to a couple of our veteran defensemen, Niskanen and Braun, who came in and I thought really slotted in well, uh, played well, but also uh, uh, were terrific mentors and, and leaders for that group. You talk about uh, mentors. You got Brian Elliott and then, of course, Carter Hart. Everybody, you know, we always want the young guy. The young guy is always what the fans want. What went into making that decision? And then what did you see from him that said, this is the guy, even though he's young, it's time to make that move and, and hand him the reins? And, of course, you've had Elliott to kind of guide him along. But what was it about Elliott, uh, excuse me, Hart, that made you feel comfortable and to, you know, get him to where he is right now? Well, the first thing, obviously, is his talent. Um, I mean, he's he's a high-end, skilled goaltender. He's got terrific hockey sense. He moves very well. He's technically sound, and he's strong mentally. And, and the way he finished last year, I mean, his track record all along, he's excelled at, at every level, but he played really, really well last year. And, and it just came down to, honestly, it's pretty tough to, to put the genie back in the bottle. I mean, once we... Uh, we unveiled him last year, and he, he played the way he did. It wasn't realistic to say, okay, we're going to put him back in the American League and let him continue to develop. We were we were going to sink or swim with Carter this year. He's not only our goalie of the of the future, but our goalie of the present. And and that that's why we uh, wanted to make sure we had a, a veteran guy with him, somebody that uh, has a lot of experience, a lot of life experience, goaltending experience, somebody that could – work with Carter and just help him because it, as talented as he is, he's a 21-year-old kid and it, it, it's a tough league and uh, there's a lot of ups and downs and, and we did see it this year with Carter, particularly in the beginning of the season, struggled a little bit on the road, uh, had a hard time uh, getting wins on the road and Brian Elliott actually uh, played well on the road and won some games for us. So Brian was able to pick him up and, and as the year went on, Carter got much better uh, on the road and, and uh, you know, I thought it was just a great tandem and how they supported each other. Um, and how they both played well. But, uh, you know, Carter, uh, you know, not only does he have a, a bright future again, his presence pretty darn good too. Yeah, there was a, a stretch there where Carter was hurt that Brian played very well. Chuck Fletcher, the Flyers GM, is our guest. Uh, I, I want to go back to the decision for Elaine Vigneault and, you know, um, what about it? What about him? What made him the right guy? When did you target him? Was there other guys that you thought about? I mean, was he the main number one guy on your list? Because it's seemingly that he has really been a perfect addition to this group. I mean, getting a little inside look at the uh, the documentary on you guys, you saw his personality was a you know just a, a tighter uh, screws. It seems like the screws got tightened a lot, uh, and that he had one vision. It just seemed like a perfect fit. And I was wondering if that's the guy when you go back to this whole thing and say that he's kind of you know because a lot of the talent is is very similar uh was he the guy that has kind of tied this thing together for you yeah he's definitely you know he's the leader of the ship i mean in terms of uh, running the, the dressing room and and uh delivering the message and getting the players to buy in and play and, and culture can be an overused term in sports but yet it, it's still relevant and he created the culture and you know, to be honest with you, I, I interviewed him, and we had one interview, and and I came back and spoke to Dave Scott and said we have to hire him. And and I, I've uh, I've spent you know a lot of years working in this business, and I was in Minnesota for many years when Elaine Vino was in Vancouver, and obviously watched him as he transitioned to uh, to the Rangers. And there just aren't many coaches with that track record. When uh, you know, it's, he's he's a very uh, very bright man knows X's and O's very well, strong communicator, but just his track record. When you look at the number of players he's developed, when you look at his uh, wins and losses, when you look at his playoff success, you know, he hasn't won a cup, but he's taken two teams to the Stanley Cup Finals. And, uh, you know, guys like that aren't available every year. In fact, they might only be available every three or four years. And, and when one of them uh, arrives, sometimes you just don't overthink it. You just, you just uh, make the decision and hire him. Now, things have gone obviously well this year. Maybe uh, a, a little ahead of, of where you thought this team would be right now? Well, I didn't have expectations going into the season other than, you know, I, I did expect us to improve. I, I know uh, we had to change the way we played. Uh, we had to change our mindset. We had to become a team that gave up significantly fewer shots and chances against, and, and uh, we had to tighten up on our goals against. And 
uh, we were you know we were 28th in the league I think last year in goals against and usually if you're not in the top half of the league it's pretty hard to, to make the playoffs so we, we had no chance of making the playoffs the way we played and the way we were going and uh, so I felt that with Elaine Vigneault and adding the veteran defenseman and uh, you know that we had a chance to dramatically improve in that area and that would give us a chance to make the playoffs uh, you know, certainly the, the second half things were clicking, and we we I, I believe we were tied for the second best record in the league from January 1st on, and uh, we've become a very good hockey team. And and uh, I, I don't know if I expected that right away, but uh, certainly the second half improvement was something that we hoped for and believed it would happen. And and uh, but that's just a credit again, not only to the coaches, but to the veteran players on our team and how they bought in and. And you mentioned it earlier with the goaltending we had, uh, the way Brian Elliott played in the second half, and the way Carter Hart continues to emerge. It, uh, you know, we're a tough out right now. We're we're in every game. Uh, Chuck Fletcher, I'll leave you with this. You know, you you were the GM in Minnesota for a long time, as you mentioned. When you got this opportunity in Philly, what was something? I don't want to say a regret or something that maybe you look back at Minnesota and say, I need to do this differently with if I get another shot at this. Uh, try not to make as many mistakes as I did, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, Minnesota was different. We were it was a different team at a different time, and I was really fortunate here. Again, I, I mentioned Ron Hextall and the job he did, and uh, there were some good players in Minnesota. Don't get me wrong, but nothing like there is here. So, it, it you know you don't you don't have to be a hero every day when you're a general manager. Make this make the decisions you have to make and sometimes just leave well enough alone and be patient and let the young players develop and and uh you know just try to stay out of the way. Uh, sometimes you got to make decisions and hire a coach and we brought in some veteran D and we made a big decision on Kevin Hayes. But there's a lot of decisions you know that we didn't make that uh, we felt we didn't have to make. And just just get out of the way and I think you learn that as you gain experience that you don't have to make every decision uh sometimes the, the best decision is to say no and, and and just show a little patience and let these young players develop all right chuck fletcher the gm of the flyers i i guess do you have any anticipation that there will be hockey in the wells fargo center with fans at any point this season oh god i hope so i i really do believe there will be hockey at some point you know and how how that transpires if we're able to have fans or if we uh, have uh, you know maybe a limit on how many fans to, to continue to observe social distancing I mean we're all guessing but I I just believe there's so many smart people in this world we're, we're going to come up with some ideas here soon and things will get better and uh, may take a little bit of time and, and uh, we obviously won't play until the public officials and health officials say say we can in some way shape or form but Boy, I'd love it because it means we're in a better place, and uh, I'm an optimist, and I think we're going to get there. I hope so, and uh, we, of course, uh, appreciate your time, Chuck, during this uh, you know pandemic that's going on to give us a couple of minutes here on the Sports Bash. And don't forget, once the Flyers return, you can listen to them right here on 97.3 ESPN. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, thank you. Stay safe. Absolutely. You too. And uh, that's Chuck Fletcher, the GM of the Flyers, here on the Sports Bash.